choose a number, let's say 39. Take the digits of that number and multiply them together. 3 times 9, that's 27. Take that number, multiply its digits together. 2 times 7, that's 14. Take that number, multiply its digits together. 1 times 4, that's 4. You keep on doing that until you end up with a single digit. Then you look how many steps it took you to get there. In this case, it took us three steps to get there. So that means that the multiplicative persistence of 39 is 3. Let's look at other numbers. 59, also multiplicative persistence of 3. 79, also multiplicative persistence of 3. Is it always true that the larger numbers have got a higher multiplicative persistence? No. You can try it out. Let's say 99. That only has a multiplicative persistence of 2. There's only one number under 100 that has a multiplicative persistence of 4. And that's your first exercise to give your students. Find it. The person that we have to thank for multiplicative persistence is Neil Sloan. Neil Sloan loves sequences, and this sequence is one of the most unusual that he's discovered. Look at the minimum number that has a specific multiplicative persistence. So, for example, the minimum number that has a multiplicative persistence of 3 is 39. The minimum number that has a multiplicative persistence of 6 is 6,788. Your second task to give your students is to find a number under 700, it's between 650 and 700, under 700 that has a multiplicative persistence of 5. Surprisingly, no number has been found that has a multiplicative persistence of more than 11. Are you ready for the two answers for 4 and 5? Here they are. The lowest number that has a multiplicative persistence of 4 is 77. There's the answer. The lowest number that has a multiplicative persistence of 5 is 679. There it is. Paul Erdős, the most published mathematician in history, also loved to tinker with multiplicative persistence. And he had an idea that to stop numbers dying so quickly, so for example, here's 987, and it dies really quickly. So to stop that, he started to explore what would happen if he ignored the zeros altogether, or if he turned the zeros into ones. I guess it's the same thing. What happens if you turn those zeros into larger numbers. Can you actually get this multiplicative persistence to fly away so that it doesn't crash into a single digit? Well, that's not obvious uh, at uh, what, uh, how big a number you need in order for that to happen. So here's um, turning it into 11. So 987 still crashes to 6, but it takes longer. A million crashes to zero immediately, but if we substitute 11 for the zeros, then we end up crashing to a single digit 6, and it takes a while to do that. If we choose a number larger than 11, let's say 19, then that took even longer to crash to a single digit. Again, just by chance, that digit happened to be 6. If you choose 15, it does not crash. To a single digit. Instead, we end up with this loop. 4,500 is equal to 4 times 5 times 15 times 15. So it's self-perpetuating. So that will never crash to a single digit. What numbers can you substitute for zero so that that happens? That's a very difficult question. I have no idea of the answer. Anyway, just something to show your kids another unsolved problem of mathematics, this one kind of off the cuff 
for platinum math. Now it's time to play a multiplication game. Here I have a red, a yellow, and two blues. That's 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus 2. That's 15. So I go up to 15. 15 times 1 is 15. Ah! Oh. Brilliant work. <laughs> that was tight. Okay, so here we have 2 plus 2, that's 4, plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. So I take power 11. That's 11 times... I'm going to give myself some relaxing time this time. So 11 times, let's say, 2 is 22. So I very gently prepare to destroy these zombies. Wait till they get into that region and destroy them mercilessly. There we go. Good job. Enjoy.
do you know that there is no number yet discovered that has a multiplicative persistence more than 11? Isn't that just wild? <laughs> I, I, this, this is what makes sequences so fantastic to study.